I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Eric Pinos, the American Ecosystem Lead of Ontology. Eric, thank you so much for coming. Welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Ashton. You're very welcome. If you could start off the interview by giving a little bit of background on how you got involved in blockchain industry originally, and then how that led into becoming the American lead for ontology. Sure. So I got involved in the industry um, in 2014. I was an MIT undergrad and MIT had just done the MIT Bitcoin airdrop, which was every undergraduate at MIT got airdropped a hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin. Uh, and this was organized by the uh, the MIT Bitcoin Club, which had just started at the time. And a hundred dollars back then it was uh, half a Bitcoin. Bitcoin was two hundred dollars. Wow! So every student, yeah, every student getting a hundred dollars was like, "Whoa, what are we going to do with it?" You know, some people started speculating on it, trading it. Others were like, ah, "What is this? Let me cash out for money." Uh, and then, but some students joined the MIT Bitcoin Club, which was the kind of the point. It was to like get people to start using it on campus. There were some merchants that accepted it. The school store accepted it. There were some restaurants that started accepting Bitcoin. Um, and it really just kind of grew out of there. So I was uh, part of the MIT Bitcoin Club. I became president of the MIT Bitcoin Club my last year, did some uh, some conferences, some events, organized some meetups. Uh, and through there, I, I met a lot of connect. I made a lot of connections by bringing in speakers to come and speak at the club. So highly recommend any students to like get involved with the local blockchain club or get involved with the lo local blockchain city meetup group because that's been the best way mm -hmm. that I've met the connections that I have now. Um, and from there, I kind of springboarded. I did a couple of uh, investment things with uh, Game Theory Group, which was a, a crypto VC firm. Um, I got involved with the Blockchain Education Network, which is a, does blockchain education for, for university groups and university students and for professors. Um, and now I'm at uh, Ontology doing the America's Ecosystem. Very cool. And t let's dive a little bit deeper into Ontology. You know, the main solutions that Ontology provides as a public blockchain and a distributed collaboration platform. Can you dive into you know, what is the competitive advantage and what is so unique about Ontology? Sure. So one of the things that I noticed was that um, public chains are a little difficult to to get onboarded for enterprises. They're really good for dApps and for like community run projects and for hackathon based projects. But a lot of these enterprises, when they want to do stuff like supply chain or blockchain for energy, uh, my research at MIT was actually on blockchain and energy. Can you have renewable mm -hmm. or tokenized renewable energy credits? And we tried deploying a system in Puerto Rico right after the hurricane. Um, and what enterprise onto a uh, public chain? Um, you know, many of them prefer Hyperledger. They prefer mm -hmm. private nets. They prefer you know, they want to move towards that spectrum of decentralization, but they don't want to just put all of their data on there. They still want to be able to to have a say and, and be part of the consensus mechanism. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why like Stellar and Ripple have gotten like a lot of traction. And what we've seen is like, okay, well, is there a medium? Can you have a multi-chain structure where you have a public mainnet that has all the benefits of a public chain while also having private blockchains being able to spin up what are essentially side chains uh, and mm -hmm. these side chains can be governed by their own consensus mechanisms or their own rules. Like, okay, you want the enterprises to be able to choose what to, what to to say and what to to have on this blockchain that's kind of private, um, but still make mechanisms and ways for that private blockchain to be able to talk to the main chain. Mm -hmm. So you still have that interconnectivity between different enterprises and between different consortiums enterprises. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what we really focus on. It's like this tailoring the solution towards the specific use case and towards the specific enterprise, while also not just full on making private, like these little private pockets of, of networks, because we want them to be able to talk to each other. That's kind of the point of this whole thing. Definitely. And that was leading me to my next question about public blockchains. People that are new to the cryptocurrency industry are pretty familiar with the Bitcoin blockchain, the Ethereum blockchain. And it sounds like Ontology has a bit of that public blockchain infrastructure, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the, one of the competitive advantages is this side chain and private infrastructure because I guess enterprises have a hard time just go, moving on to the Bitcoin blockchain without all of these other services. Is that one of the main competitive advantages? And what are some of the other differences between Ontology and, and Bitcoin and Ethereum? Yeah, I think that's one of the main competitive advantages. Uh, another one I would say is just pretty the pretty standard, like high transaction speeds and capabilities. 
Um, they need high transaction speeds now. And if they were trying to deploy something on other blockchains, mm -hmm. if it's too slow, then it doesn't work for anything beyond just a proof of concept. So mm -hmm. us being able to take a, an idea, we, we work with a company, we're able to take an idea, take, make a proof of concept out of it and deploy it and run it and, and scale it up. Um, I think that kind of also represents a, a big advantage that Ontology has. Mm -hmm. And how has Ontology managed the blockchain dilemma of balancing the scalability of the network, keeping high security on the network, while also remaining decentralized as possible? Yeah, so the consensus mechanism that we use, um, it's called VRF, VRF VBFT, which is just a really long acronym. It's Verifiable Random Function Byzantine Fault Tolerance, getting every adjective under. What, what essentially that means is the the um, Byzantine fault tolerance is kind of like proof of stake or delegated proof of stake where you have a, a list of delegates that are weighed by the stake that they have and each consensus round one of them is picked to mine the next block um, but with where the VRF comes in the verifiable random function is just like you can just like you have these random number generators in your wallets that you trust to generate random seed phrases that are provably random um, so, so that you know that no one can like come across that same seed phrase or that they're not like actually saving the seed phrase or that it's not easily guessable. The verifiable random function picks one of the consensus nodes at random so that you know that there can't really be a collusion happening. So that mm -hmm. kind of helps keep the, the system running. It helps it be really fast without needing to have every single node in the entire network constantly participating in the consensus algorithm, which is what slows down a lot of Mm -hmm. um, you know, proof of work chains is that there's there's very long propagation times because mm -hmm. you kind of have to gossip network your way around through the entire network whereas here's you can just pick or it's a node is picked each round um, to mine the next block so mm -hmm. kind of uh yeah it helps with the speed there and we've stress tested it in environments i mean right now transaction speeds are really high and ontology is you know, it's in the top 30 so it's it's pretty well like trade a chain, pretty high transaction volumes. But even in simulated environments, we kind of push it to its full potential, kind of see like what's the max amount of transactions that it can hit per second. Mm -hmm. That's great. And uh, it looked like Ontology had quite a large community already. Could you talk about the size of the community and, and how you're helping foster development in the platform? Yeah, so we have a pretty big community. I would say like region-wise, it's very focused on in Asia because that's kind of where the project had its origins. Um, but now, you know, me in, in the U.S., we have a region head in Europe, we have a region head in Russia. Um, we've kind of taken charge in uh, taking over the, the kind of natural communities that have been built because there has been like a telegram group. There has been, a you know, in the Discord, a lot of people are from the U.S., a lot of people are from Latin America. A lot of people kind of found us, you know, through those just, just by reading about us online. So Ontology kind of decided that it was necessary to put someone in charge of making sure that that community is taken care of. Uh, in those specific regions um, mm -hmm. so we've been able to draw more attention we've been able to get more feedback we've been able to translate our documentation into multiple different languages create more developer resources you know think about what partnerships can we make in those specific regions to to help better educate help better uh, deploy out these use cases and what exchanges especially can we can we get listed on to to give more access to the people of those different regions in those different countries uh, the ability to buy ont that's great. And to have successful applications and a lot of applications uh, on the platform, it generally starts with the development. You know, how easy is it to develop on Ontology and uh, are there active developers working on business cases right now? Yeah. So another reason why I personally really like Ontology, um, I was a CS student, a CS and business major. Um, and when I first started to learn how to build on blockchain, uh, the this was like 2016. So really the only choice was Ethereum um, and you had to learn Solidity, which you know doesn't take that long to learn. You can pretty much pick it up. But um, one of the things that makes Ontology great, and I think there's other blockchains that do this as well, is you can st you can do the smart contracts <clears throat> in Python, in JavaScript, and in C Sharp. So mm -hmm. these are languages that developers are already familiar with. You, know, you don't have to learn a new language. So that enables us to be able to reach out to the to the general developer community, not just the blockchain developer community, which you know is dwarfed by by the size of the number of JavaScript developers in the world. Yeah. So, going being able to go to JavaScript development communities and or you know some people that are looking for for new jobs or new opportunities 
and their skill sets are JavaScript development or Python development, it's a lot easier to onboard them and say like, hey, maybe your next app should be a blockchain based app or you should consider how blockchain could be used for this because mm -hmm. it does, you know, it's, it's not that hard to learn a new language, but it definitely it can't be overstated how much of an advantage it is to be able to code something in a language that you already know because you can hit the ground running, you get right off the bat. Definitely. I know that Ontology has already built a great foundation, but I'm curious to know what does the development roadmap look like for the rest of 2020 and what's in store for the users of Ontology to look forward to? Yeah, so we, uh, at the beginning of the year, we actually published a roadmap uh, to look forward to for things in 2020. Um, it's nicknamed uh, Roadmap Aristotle. So each year with each new release of Ontology, there's a, it's a different Greek philosopher's name. I think last year it was like Plato. And um, there's like a quote attributed to it. But I don't, I don't remember the quote, but I remember the tech. So the tech the, in the roadmap that we're coming out with. Um, so more on the virtual VM side. So right now, Ontology had supported up to this point native smart contracts, which is like very low level, just interacting with Ontology, um, just very basics. Uh, then we added Neo VM support. So the Neo virtual machine, which adds more smart contract capabilities and is what lets you program in the C Sharp and Java or JavaScript. Um, and now with the new uh, Wasm VM that we've just uh, added compatibility for, that increases the speed even more than already capable. Mm -hmm. um, it's just an even more efficient way of doing your smart contracts. And then on top of that, what we consider it, <clears throat> sorry, what we consider it is called the multi VM. So the multi VM combines these three smart contracts together. It actually makes it compatible because if you think about it, you as a developer can build something in JavaScript and deploy it on the Ontology blockchain. Someone else can build something in C Sharp and deploy it on the Ontology blockchain. And those two apps can communicate with each other. Mm -hmm. um, so that's like a big deal. And also the fact that you know you can code it to interact with the Neo VM on Ontology, where someone else, because they need different different uh, process, they need things to be run in parallel, or they need to mm -hmm. be able to run things a certain way, they can deploy it on the Wasm VM. Um, so that interoperability is a big deal for us to give developers the ability to build on what whatever it is that they want. Um, and also interchain interoperability is another thing that we've been working on, right? These bridges between ontology and Ethereum, ontology and Bitcoin, ontology and Neo. Um, we've partnered with Chainlink and we're looking at, you know, using the oracles to keep like the price data, like all, all accurate as we do these trustless swaps between the different chains. But we definitely think that's an important piece, um, being able to have that cross chain functionality. And that's a lot of what mm -hmm. our roadmap focuses on, on the tech side. It's all about the interoperability and you know, not just within the, the ontology blockchain, but also outside of it. Mm -hmm. I completely agree, Eric. And interoperability and being able to band these different blockchain communities together to work towards a common vision, I think will greatly help with the adoption of the technology out into the to mainstream world. Um, so that's great that the team is focusing on that. Uh, now, moving into the mainstream world, do you foresee any specific business use cases for the Ontology blockchain, or is the platform really just being put out there for developers to build whatever they want to build in whatever specific industries? Uh, so we're actively looking for more enterprises, and we've been partnering with enterprises. We've done some, we've done some use cases and and uh, in in supply chain, so like chemical manufacturing and keeping track of like the chemicals. Um, and also with like some hospitals and keeping track of like medical records and the transactions of medical records. I think where the most adoption is gonna happen first um, is, not in, is not in blockchain for supply chain or blockchain for real estate or block, essentially blockchain for like real world assets. I think where it's gonna start first is blockchain for entirely digital assets. So things like non-fungible tokens or crypto art, um, but also more more uh, old world things like like contracts and mm -hmm. like legal contracts and um, patents, copyright certifications. These things are digital already, and the, well, the difference between say like a, like a digital house deed and a digital certificate, right, is that the certificate proves something about you that's entirely digital. The house deed, even if you take um, a, a list of property records and put that on a blockchain at the end, somehow you still have to be able to enforce that into the real world. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of relies on things of solutions that are beyond just blockchain. Um, but for something that's entirely digital, that can be entirely tokenized. That can be entirely codified. And I think that's where we're going to start seeing a lot of this stuff 
um, be be deployed first and that's kind of where we're putting uh, our attention it's like beyond just the token as a payment solution right? i think yeah. stable coins are really interesting and in giving people just the opportunity to be able to pay things in buy things and sell things in stable coins um, but the next thing beyond that i think is the this exchange of data and being able to own your data and being able to have it stored you know it's, it's yours you own it Mm -hmm. um, but because you because it's signed on a blockchain, because the hash is signed on a blockchain, you can prove that you're not tampering with your own data. You're not changing it. Like it, it is the same data that was issued to you. But the difference is that you know to to prove that you, to prove that you didn't mess with it. It's not that they have to hold it for you. Like the hospital has to hold it for you, or your your university has to hold it for you and be your like trust anchor and like say like oh yeah this person did go here this person mm -hmm. does in fact have this certification you can hold it yourself and the people that interact with you can still trust that you're not you're not just writing your own documents you're not just forging your own documents because because of that blockchain because of the fact that it was issued to you and it was signed cryptographically when it was issued to you so that people would know that if you tampered with it that's great and such a paradigm shift happening here it sounds like ontology is moving in the right direction and you have a lot of promising things on the go. Now, are you guys looking for anything specific as you continue to grow and how can people reach out and learn more about ontology? Yeah. So we're always looking for more um, partners, both like in community and in enterprise. Um, I think that, yeah, the, the more people involved in the solution or in this, in the ecosystem, the better uh, we are looking for, obviously like more interest in, in people that want to be involved in the staking. So like buying the token and then choosing to stake. So ontology, because we have a staking ecosystem, the ONT, the ontology token earns, earns rewards or earns gas, right? Just by holding it, um, just by holding it in your wallet, you earn ONG, which is the ontology gas token. Uh, and then you can also on top of that, then stake it. So it's not even staked yet when you just have it, um, you can stake it and earn double the rewards. And now you're, you're, you're helping upkeep the network and helping keep it decentralized mm -hmm. by putting your stake to a node. Um, so just having more people involved in the ecosystem always, is always great. Uh, and then on top of that, right, if people are, if people have a community or if people have a company, you know, if someone has a, a company, if they have a, a, you know, yeah, like a community, any way that they want to be involved is ways that we're looking for, whether they want to teach, whether they want to onboard their community members, whether they want to deploy a blockchain solution, um, for whatever their enterprise or whatever their industry is. Yeah, all, all those areas are kind of what we're focusing on. And really like all over the world, because like I mentioned, we have people in Europe, we have people here, we have people in Latin America, in Russia, in Asia. So yeah, we're kind of, you know, we're not of the, um, oh, we have to do something here or we have to do something there. It's more of like wherever the opportunity arises, that's where the demand is, that's where the interest is, and that's mm -hmm. where we'll choose to focus our resources on. Great. Thank you so much, Eric. I will leave the links to Ontology's site and the details in the description box below for the viewers. That's all the time that we have for the interview, but I really appreciate you taking the time. It's been a pleasure hearing about Ontology, and let's follow up in the near future. Yeah, thank you so much, Ashton. Look forward to seeing how everything plays out over the next couple of years.